Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video on how to set up things like AM32 ESCs. Now this is a 7 inch quad, Armitan frame, a TPS Lucid flight controller and ESC stack that I built in this series here over the Christmas period. So if you want to see me actually put this thing together from a pile of bits, then that will tell you how exactly I've done it. Um, Express LRS, walk snail. But the reason for the video today is that as part of that series, I did show how to do things like reverse AM32 ESCs. And I'm making this video as a separate standalone thing because typically the way it works is that if I hide information like that as part of one of my builds, you can't find it when you need it. So this one is for all of you that were like me, BL Heli 32, BL Heli S user, and then suddenly, everything you're starting to get through is coming through with AM32 firmware. It's actually really easy to do. Let's first of all show you how to do things like simple reversing of an ESC if you find that one of the speed controllers is spinning the motor in the wrong direction, and then go through some of the standard settings. Because to be honest, a lot of it is going to feel quite familiar, but there's a couple of other key things. Now we're going to need to power the model while we do this, just like BL Heli S and things, the ESCs have to be powered in order for you to talk to them. So I'm gonna plug it in. So just to do make sure your props are off for safety. Um, I've actually moved mine. I'm gonna balance them, the seven inch props, just to um, have this model as smooth as I possibly can. But before we get into that, let's jump here on the computer. This is Edge, the browser, but you can use anyone that's supported. If I search for am32.ca and hit enter, then it's going to come up with this screen. This is the configurator for AM32. Now you can actually go into downloads and you can download the suite and you can do those things for Windows and Linux. However, if you are playing with it, um, using a browser is actually an awful lot of sense because it means that you always have access to the latest and greatest hosted version. Be aware though, things like Firefox at the moment don't work with it. It'll kind of come up and tell you to use a browser that will allow you to talk to the USB port. So it's just going to sit here and just say initializing until we're ready. So let's power on the quad. Again, props are off for safety. Ooh, let me unplug my Walksnail unit so that isn't getting hot while we're sat here goofing about. And let's plug the battery in. There's the ESC is initializing. So we'll plug in the USB cable and we'll plug that into the computer. Here in the top right hand corner, we can now see that it's actually giving us different options. So what we can do is click on here where it says port select click the port that has appeared on the computer. It's gonna be different for you, whatever one is available, click on connect. And then what we should see is when we click on connect over here, it should give you all this information. Let's go back into the configurator. Now, it kind of shows how many motors are connected. Um, it's erroneously showing eight here, but don't worry, when we actually read it all, there is genuinely only four on this. So what we're gonna do is click on read, and that's going to get all of the information. So you see it said set pass-through. That means that we're talking to the AM32 ESCs via the flight controller. This one just happened to be running I now, but the same in beta flight. Uh, oh, just a quick tip. If you're using beta flight, of course, there is the option to reverse the motors in the interface as I've covered in other videos. That still works with AM32 if reversing is all you need. However, I would recommend coming in here and having a tweak about. Now, the cool thing is, is that here are my four motors shown. You can see the two that are reversed. If I just click on the reversing thing I can actually there we go I can click on reverse and we can click save so let's just save that and let's just read it back and there we go we're all set you can see here at the moment that you can just actually just look at the settings for one individual ESC and these little green icons uh, little things actually appear underneath. I think it would be nice in this interface. Maybe they'll change it in the future. You see, if I get rid of number one, it still shows three. So it just tells you that only three ESC's settings are being read. Um, I would make sure if you're playing around with the multi-rotor, obviously you have all four selected, uh, but in, I would like it to have like a four 
um, shown all the time and if you deselect one it just becomes like an empty circle rather than a full circle maybe that's just my own personal thing let's go through some of these because this is how i tend to set up am32 stuff first of all leave the protocol as auto you can set it to servo um, d shot everything else if you leave it on auto it'll automatically figure that out i'm running these on d shot 300 and it's already figured it so that's great we'll keep it as that turn on stuck rotor protection stuck rotor protection is really handy because it means that if you actually fly and get stuck in a hedge or a tree and the motor is jammed up against something and it can't physically turn it'll detect that and stop trying to spin that motor which means it won't burn out the motor and, and cook things which is great um i wouldn't have stall protection or use hull sensors turned on stall protection is for things like RC crawlers really where it's struggling to actually get the wheels moving on stuff like that turn on variable PWM and complementary PWM because those are actually really handy things it allows you to set some of this other stuff timing advance now you can set this to whatever you want uh, 15 degrees is a pretty good number uh, you can set it a bit lower the lower you set it the more chance there is of having a desync that's obviously bad so 15 is the default some people are running it a little bit lower. Personally, I would start with 15 degrees and see how you get. That just means, just like with a petrol engine, the phases are being fired slightly before that it comes in line with the magnet, gives the magnetic field time to be created and have an effect. I'd leave startup power at 100%. Um, motor kv set this for the kv of the motors that you have it just helps am32 figure everything out the other thing as well is the motor poles this is the number of magnets that's actually in the bell on the outside of the motor it should be in the specs of the motor that you have although you can physically just count the number of magnets which is what i did most motors of the kind of five and seven inch sizes like these um, eco motors from emacs gonna be 14 poles Smaller motors for three inches are gonna be 12, typically, but check the specs of the one that you're playing with. Set it in here, that will allow AM32 to kind of accurately detect how the motor is running. Beep of volume, I'd leave that as five. Um, you could turn it up if you really wanted to, but these are reasonably loud. PWM frequency, I would leave it for initial settings to 24 to 48 kilohertz. The PWM frequency, sets how fast the field effect transistors are going to switch on and off to drive the motor. So the PWM frequency can be adjusted from down to, I think it's eight to 16K up to 48 to 96K. 24 to 48K is going to be okay for most things. Higher PWM frequencies might feel smoother and improve efficiency in a couple of cases, but may reduce things like motor braking. So I would just leave it as the default 24 to 48 until you're happy. Next thing in terms of limits, turn off low voltage cutoff would be my recommendation, particularly if you're gonna be running things like lithium ion, where the battery potentially is gonna get down to a level where normal ESCs would think that that battery is now, if it's a LiPo battery, completely empty. So be aware of that. So I would just turn that off. I turn off the temperature and also the current limit as well. I disable both of those. If I'm having a problem, I want to be able to fly this thing back and not lose a £150 worth of Walksnell unit, a £60, £80 flight controller and ESC stack, a £30 battery, an £80 frame, etc, etc. So I just turn that off. I'd rather get stuff back and then buy another £20 motor or whatever I need to fix it. Sinusoidal startup. Don't worry about that. That's not something that we need to worry about in quad world. In terms of braking, we can have brake on stop. Um, I wouldn't have that turned on. It's really only for things like wings and stuff like that, where you want the motor to very quickly come to a stop so that the things like folding props and things will fold down. With a similar setting in BL Heli 32 and BL Heli S. So don't have that turned on would be my advice for this. Car type reverse braking. Well, guess what? It's not a car, so we're not going to turn those on. Leave the running brake level at 10. That's the default. And then the last section here is for servo settings. Servo settings is something that is only relevant for those that 
by using something like PWM, one shot or multi shot. As we are using D shot, we don't need to set any of those at all, what the low and high ranges are. Um, ultimately, that's you know standard where calibration is going to come in. You could come in here and just set what those look like. However, as we're using D shot, we don't need them at all. So that is how you set everything up. If you wanted to reverse something, you can just come in here, click on reverse, write it. I would also recommend reading it back. And then once you've read it back, you just confirm it on the screen. But by using a web page, it's super, super easy. So if you're looking at getting some AM32 powered ESCs and you've not used them before, don't worry, the settings is super, super simple. And again, if you want to reverse them at the moment in Betaflight and hopefully soon in iNav, just be able to click that button and it'll reverse them just like it does with BL Heli S. But I would recommend going into your AM32 speed controller and setting things like the number of poles in particular, and also the motor KV to match the motors that you're using on your quad. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.